Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to JDB Selects. Coming at you today with the Origin Game 1 match breakdown. I can't believe it. We're already at the Origin period of the year. The season has flown by. It's a great time for Warriors fans because we tend to beat sides we normally shouldn't beat, so happy with that. But let's get stuck into breaking down Game 1 of the 2023 State of Origin series. But before we get stuck into Game 1, let's look back at series gone by. So looking at the two sides head-to-head, -head, the Maroons have the advantage in head-to-head -head wins winning 67 games to the Blues 57. That also means they have the advantage in series wins, winning 24, where the Blues only have 16 series wins. I know it is a bit hard slash near impossible to compare previous series with the current series, given how many players chop and change throughout the squads, but I thought we'd look back on just the last five series. In the last five series, the Blues have won three of five, uh, with the Maroons winning the other two. Interestingly enough too, the Blues have actually outscored the Maroons quite heavily in the recent series. The Blues are averaging 24 points scored per game, while the Maroons are only down at 14. Um, the average margin when the Blues win is actually 13 plus. Their average margin is 22 points when they get the wins, uh, whereas uh, the Maroons only average a 6 point winning margin. The average points per game in the last 5 series is only 38, so if you are a betting man, maybe going unders on 40 points or less is a good shout. And looking at the home game win rate, uh, Maroons win 80% of their games at home, and the Blues also have a pretty high win rate at 75%. And interestingly enough too, the Blues actually have the advantage at neutral grounds, winning 66% of the time. And a few more cheeky origin stats for you. So, the winner of Game 1 has gone on to win the series 76% of the time. That does exclude uh, the two series where they were drawn. Bad news for New South Wales supporters, as the Blues have only won 25% of Game 3 deciders with Queensland taking the other 75%. So if it does go to Game 3 again this year, the Blues do not have history on their side. And there have also only been 7 3-0 clean sweep series, fairly even too, with Queensland having 4 clean sweeps and New South Wales with 3. But anyway, that's enough of that old nonsense because it doesn't matter. It's all about the sides this year. Let's get stuck into the teams list. Alright, starting first with Billy and his Maroons. There's only one debutante in the side this year, and that is Reese Walsh. He comes in at fullback, which pushes Kalen Ponga out of the side. That's obviously quite a contentious call with a lot of people believing that Ponga would be the first choice fullback. But obviously, given his uh, recent concussion history and, I guess, lack of football, uh, Billy has decided to go for Reese Walsh instead. Another big talking point for the Maroon side is obviously the inclusion of David Fafita. He's obviously been in impressive form so far in the 2023 NRL season, uh, and he last played for the Maroons all the way back in 2001. A couple of noticeable omissions from the side this year, obviously we've touched on Ponga, then you add in the fact Dane Gaga isn't there, Corey Oates isn't there, he's gone with Murray Taolungi over Corey Oates, which I think is very, very questionable. You've got Josh Papali'i who's retired, Kirk Capewell and Jeremiah Nanai also aren't in the frame this year, so you've definitely got a new look Maroon side, but in saying that, there's still obviously a very, very strong side on paper. The likes of Hunt, Munster, Cherry Evans, Grant, Fasua Malawi, you know, people that are just, you know, built for origin. Hamaso Tabuifido is also back in action for the Maroons this year. It's a really strong side on paper with the likes of Munster and Cherry Evans, Hunt at nine, you know, big for feeder, Gilbert and Carrigan. I mean, Carrigan, what a, what a what a machine. His form for the Broncos has been absolutely unreal. And their bench is super strong. You've got the likes of Grant to come in for impact, for Sua Malawi, who's an absolute origin workhorse, and then Cotter and Arrow. I mean, it's a good looking side. And now moving to the Blues and Freddie's side, he's named three debutants to start. Uh, that's Davida Pangai Jr., Hudson Young, and Nico Hines, who is well-deserving, but interestingly enough, will come off the bench at number 17. I'm really interested to see how they use Nico. I mean, I'm not sure he'll have the same sort of impact he would if he was starting in the side in the halves, but we'll have to see what Freddie has up his sleeve. Great to see Josh Adokar back on the wing. He missed out last season, and that was just one of the worst origin selection calls you could ever imagine. So great to see the Fox back. The other big talking point too is at number nine with Coruscant being chosen over Cook. Personally, I would have taken Cook, but I guess Freddie wants to go for that Panther synergy with the likes of Luai, Cleary, and Yo. Uh, they know their game inside out. So Coruscant makes a lot of sense, especially after his performances in the last few weeks for the Tigers. But it is, you know, it's a, it's a tough call. I, I don't envy Freddie for having to make that. All in all, though, I think if you are a New South Wales supporter, that you'd be pretty happy with the squad Freddie has named. I think the main talking points are definitely Hines coming off at 17 and the choice of Hooker. But all in all, you've got Mitchell, Turbo, Tedesco, you know, you've got some absolute throbbers in there. 
And as always, when we do these match breakdowns, we always end with a key player matchup. This week, we're going to do two key player matchups, obviously being Origin, you know, special game, special week. So starting first, my first key player matchup is the two locks, Paddy Carrigan and Isaiah Yo. Starting first with Paddy, I mean, do I even need to say it? Carrigan is an absolute animal. I think last week for the Broncos, he racked up nearly 70 tackles. I mean, in his debut Origin series last year, he won the Wally Lewis medal. You talk about a player that just oozes origin, you're talking about Patrick Carrigan. He's averaging 170 run meters, he's clocked up 694 post-contact meters, 14 hit-ups per game, and 21 tackle breaks. I mean, he's the sort of player you want on your side. And on the other side of the coin, you've got Isaiah Yo, who will be that centerpiece for the New South Welsh side, linking effortlessly with Clary, Luai, and Coruscant. Yo's just that guy, you know, he's Mr. Consistent, and he's even got a decent kick on him too. Yo's effort is always outstanding, you know, you look at the way he was one of the only two players trying to chase Ben Hunt down in Game 3 last year, that's the sort of player you want on your side. Unfortunately, both players are yet to rack up tries this year, I actually don't think Paddy Carrigan's ever scored a try in first grade, so maybe this year's the year. But definitely two key players to keep an eye on for Origin. And of course, my other key player matchup has to be the halfbacks in Daly, Cherry Evans, and Nathan Cleary. There's a bit of a storyline here between these two. Obviously, with the World Cup's just been, Cleary's kind of taken over and pushed DCE out of the Australian starting side. Cleary is obviously one of the best halfbacks, uh, if not the best halfback we've ever seen. Cherry Evans was in that category for a long time too, so it's an awesome clash between two premier athletes. Cherry Evans' kicking game was ultimately the difference between the two Origin sides last season. I think Nathan would have taken a lot from Game 3 last year and will incorporate that into his plans in preparation this year. Both players are just absolutely unreal and always turn it up to another level come Origin time, so looking forward to watching them go at it. Bang, and just like that, we're done. Match breakdown complete, two key player matchups, teamless breakdown, all the good stuff. Um, thanks as always for watching. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button. Plenty more NRL and league content just coming out constantly. So pumped up for Wednesday. It can't come soon enough. New South Wales game one, that's my tip, one to 12. See you in the next one.